welcome person and uh, I'm grateful to be talking to you, you listening and viewing me. Uh, the name is Rogers Wanzagiro and I'm glad that uh, what is going to be connecting us for this session, this moment is the word of God and a specific item, forgiveness. Forgiveness is uh, an item that is necessary, but at most times taken for granted, taken as a, a by the way, I'm here to let you know and believe with me that forgiveness is a desire to be free from any guilt, all at heart and at mind. Just in this introduction, I'd like to let you know that it is a self will to settle or reconcile with your mind and soul. Reconcile your mind and soul with God and the man. Man, that person near to you, that person you've ever interacted with. If your mind and soul is reconciled with God and other people, you are liberty. Therefore, forgiveness stands for four things. Your mind, your soul, and God with others. So I'm here to again continue letting you know that a gift, that forgiveness is a gift. God given. God given in a sense that it is true, it's a true saying that to sin is human but forgiveness is divine so it is not a human effort but the divine power needs to be upon you that's why your mind your soul should be at exposure for the spirit of god to work in and if it does not crop from the passion within you to be at peace with all the people then it will not come so it is that passion you've de you develop that you want to be at peace with all the people at your best understanding so this improves your emotional state that is the freedom or being with at peace in your mind so if your desire is to obtain eternal life if your desire is to obtain eternal life and eternal life is the kingdom of god therefore forgiveness or forgiving others and yourself forgiving others and yourself is the basic principle that you cannot avoid there's no way you can be desiring to have eternity that god gives if you do not consider forgiving others and yourself many times we forgive in other people but forgiving yourself is another issue that will make you better make you better that you will sit with nothing haunting you forgiveness is a true meaning of one who's a passion to be a solution always not a problem not trouble if at one time and all time you think that you need to be a solution then you need to forgive because it's clear in the bible that in matthew chapter 18 verse 7 that trouble or temptations are meant to be there. But who to those ones by whom this trouble or temptation come? So if your desire is to be a solution, then you need to forgive. Look at this. This is a step. This is one step of ensuring that you are shaped for eternity. That your figure fits the narrow door. That's forgiveness as we have this introduction. Let me bring it clear at the biblical part. Those are revelations that I get from the Bible. But let's read it, let's be specific in Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 18, verse 21. I'm going to read just up to 27. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? up to seven times. P 
Peter thought that is only seven times that are sufficient. But this is what Jesus Christ said, shockingly. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times, seven. Therefore, the kingdom of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, he was brought to him who owned him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold, his wife, his children, and that all that he had for the payment to be made. And this is what the servant did. The servant therefore fell down. It is it can even happen to you when it is you to be confiscated. The whole of the life of this man was to be confiscated. He fell down, and therefore, when he fell down, he said, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all the debt. Then the master of that servant was moved with passion. He released him and he forgave him all the debt. Now, when we bring that version, I just want to bring out something clear. That to forgive calls for each one of us to be patient and so listening to others. Be patient and so listening and give another chance to others and to one another. Not because they are connected to you. You may be only considering those who are connected to you by blood, by way of work, but so long as somebody has something to say in the turn of what has been hurt to your life, be patient, listen to them, and give them another chance to settle with you. By the way, it's not to be partial. It's not supposed to be partial because the master forgave him the whole of the debt. It should not be, it should be complete. And therefore, it should be in that way, full, from heart. Not by lips. Not to help, not a show up to others. Not because they have demanded, but it's from heart. That's forgiveness. Like the masters demonstrated. I just want to bring you next. That is shocking revelation. That... And forgiveness delivers you, a person who has not forgiven, to torture us. Torture us can express a physical torture to your body. It can be emotional torture to your body. It can be that your passion is destabilized. It's a shocking revelation. As in verse 32 of this month 18. Verse 32 says, Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. This very servant, the master, had the passion of when he went out and he found his fellow who had not paid him a debt, he held him by the neck and pushed him to prison. Irrespective of the pleading of the fellow servant, he took him to prison. Now, when other servants told this master, this master called him a wicked servant. And he also, in turn, pushed him to prison. Not because of the other money, but because he failed to forgive. So unforgiveness will expose you, will push you to torture us. Different torture us. This one was to his master. Now, every Christian is habit. Should be that he or she forgives everyone for everything. Forgive everyone for everything unconditionally because God describes those people who don't want to forgive as wicked as we have already here in verse 32. Do you desire to be wicked? Or you also need to be called a righteous person. Let it be your passion to forgive others. Otherwise, choose Choose to forgive. Choose. If you don't choose to forgive, then you will choose the other side and you will be called a wicked person. Although God provides a window 
of grace for people to reconcile with others. Also, there's a window of that and desired, desired action towards you. God does something you don't deserve to you when you have not yet forgiven. He does not tolerate. God does not tolerate people who do not forgive people, others from their own heart. He has little tolerance. My brother, God has tolerated you enough. My sister, brethren who are seeing me, who are listening to me, open wide. Because to torture, to be tortured means distress. The torturers will make you uncomfortable. You will be suffering. You will be limited. You will be limited. And therefore, I beseech you, I urge you to fear God, not people, and have a reason to forgive without a limit. Because it will bring you healing. If you don't forgive without a limit, there will be no healing. You will be wounded. I know you are there. You are wounded at heart intentionally or, <laughs> or accidentally. The wound you have is because you are not forgiving. It's not a fault. You are wounded in or out physically. You are fought with many people because you have not forgiven them. But I pray. Like Moses told the Israelites, choose life. He gave them a choice. Now today I put it before you. Obey to forgive others or disobey and remain with the unforgiving heart. You remain with wounds. But good news, when you obey, you will get healed and you will be blessed. When you obey and forgive others, you will be healed and blessed. But if you remain disobeyed, disobedient, you will be judged, you will be tortured, you will be limited and unpeaceful. Thank you. That is the episode of Introducing Forgiveness. When we meet another time, we shall be talking about the five requirements for lasting forgiveness. God bless you.